We're so early. It's so over. Frick it, we ball. Frick it, we bandle. Good, good question. Stop. Like, the bandle stuff is all MIDI, but it's probably tempting fate to always have it in a lies of PVOD. Get my YouTube channel DMCA'd for a video that's going to get like 3,000 views. Okay, here we go. 1984, 258 million views. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eight, eleven, twelve. Okay, I don't, I don't know yet what it is. Wait, is this, is this um, dead or alive right round? Dead or alive, you spin me round like a record. Oh, it is! La, 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 la. <laughs> oh, dude, I'd recognize that uh, marimba anywhere. Oh, come on, I mean, you're not missing it on this. Like a record, baby, round, 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 round. How about the bass on that one? Sorry. <laughs> you can really fit any song with any other song. Or at least you can fit Barracuda by heart on top of any other song. Bait used to be believable. Looking at some of the comments in here. That's what you've been cooking up for two days? NL, do you clip your toenails or do you peel them off in the shower? Come on. Bait used to be believable. That's all I'm going to say. Back when I was like... Yes, I don't know, I 12, 13, nails. I would also, sit, hi, my name is Matt. I would sit on the shower and George I would bend over and I would bite my toenails off and I would just like it fucking. It's so like I follow green text reposter on Twitter and sometimes there's some great green text. Today, green text reposter posted a green text repost and it was about how like a guy got his girlfriend pregnant to the pizza tower soundtrack and i was like this shit did not fucking happen bro come on this is and the it's always phrased as if it's like a psa it's like be careful out there bros and i'm like you're making this shit up you're playing with dolls right now man you did not impregnate your girlfriend in the pizza tower soundtrack it's ridiculous no i do do i believe that there's some degenerates out there that are fucking into the pizza tower soundtrack on occasion yeah absolutely I do not believe, if that really happened, you would never tell anybody about it. You would hide that from everybody forever. Or you're like, I don't know, like 15 years old. Hey NL, there's a poop bandit at large in the college I work at. Someone keeps breaking in overnight and pooping in the classrooms. Breaking in though, or is it unlocked? It's bad either way. But are, so like, when I was, working a summer job in downtown Kingston, I would, I don't know if I have IBS or I just have like some otherworldly bowel movements, but I would say like one in 12 toilets does not handle my bowel movements well. So uh, my work toilet was one of those. So on my lunch break, I would go to random stores, shopping malls and stuff like that. I learned where the bathrooms were open and I would dookie in those bathrooms, so I fucked up their toilet instead of the work toilet, okay? I personally, I didn't see that as being a poop bandit. It wasn't like I said, hey, can I have the bathroom code? And I went in there and broke the toilet. It was like, it was a public bathroom. It was open. Just because I didn't work there, I, I would go in there. I, I, would, I didn't do anything wrong. All I did was poop in the toilet. Sometimes it flushed down. Sometimes it didn't flush down, down perfectly. And then I, you know, I mean, we're talking about LaSalle Muse here. There's not a, not a single employee in the damn place. Anyone here in downtown Kingston know what I'm talking about? No? Sure. <laughs> no? LaSalle Muse is still empty? That, I know! They took out the damn uh, restaurant that the 75-year-olds would eat in. There would usually be like two 75-year-olds in there. La Salle Muse is where I did my in-class driver's ed before we got permission to do the in-car driver's ed. I believe it also used to be the home of Kingston Online Services, an independent internet service provider. And um, 
John Gerritsen's office, the, the former MPP of Kingston and the Islands. That's how you know that bit is real. I know every store in that fucker. You don't know John Gerritsen, former fucking Speaker of the House or whatever? I went in there once, they fixed the pendant. There is a jewelry store, you're not wrong. There is a jewelry store. 9 a.m. Coke Zero is kind of crazy. What if you uh, woke up at 5.35 a.m.? Just no-sold four straight 30-minute Peloton rides. I mean, come on, 30-minute Jess King Ludacris ride, 30-minute Hannah Corbin Halloween ride, 30-minute... What the, what the fuck did we do this morning, boys? What did we do this morning? Give me a second here. 30-minute Ali Love Halloween ride, 30-minute Dennis Morton Low Impact ride. That, that Low Impact, I don't know, I know everybody was not there for that. That Low Impact ride was good, though. That's one of the best Low Impact rides I've ever done. And your head is all the way up it. I know I'm going a little crazy, too. You know why? Because on Sunday, we did the 120-minute long Matt Wilpers ride. Here's how bike-pilled I am right now. Matt Wilpers ate a banana over the course of two hours, and I said, next, I was at the grocery store later that day, I said, holy fuck, I gotta get some bananas. You can't see it, but up on the shelf, right by this piece of art right here, I had a banana. Every 15 minutes for two hours, I ate like an eighth of a banana. Uh, KFC just introduced Beyond Meat Chicken Tenders. Uh. <laughs> you know how crazy you have to be to not eat a banana in like three minutes and instead titrate it out over two hours? You got to have like mental illness. I don't know what kind it is, but I'm loving it. Beyond Meat Fox? Yeah, Fox. Fox up the LaSalle Muse toilet on my lunch break. There's going to be a phase two though. Get ready. I, I, I preferred when there was... The same one was rushing me. He's coming. He's coming. The weekend voice. I feel it coming. <laughs> coming, 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 coming. Flow Rider. Now Flow Rider's getting in on this one too. Flow Rider, Imagine Dragons featuring the weekend. He's coming, he's coming, he's coming. That's oh, she keep on making me money around. <laughs> I don't know the words to any of these fucking songs. <laughs> hey, hey, whoa. Ease up there, kid. You're out of your damn weight class here. By the way, I will never forgive many of you. Malv made a tweet. The tweet was, what is the perfect temperature to set your house at in the wintertime? It was like 69, 70, 71, 68. So it was like 68 to 71. I said, where's 73? Everybody started torching me. They said 73. They were posting like, I can't believe it reaction memes and stuff like that. You guys got me super self-conscious. I was like, apparently 73 is like way too hot. They, people were acting like I was living inside of a damn terrarium. So I turned my thermostat down to 71. Catch me coming down to my office in the morning. Oh, this shocks you. This shocks you. Freezing my fucking ass off. I think that we, well, you said 75. I don't always say what I mean, okay? My office is at 73. You can see that in the follow-up tweet. I don't know what, what Kate's office is at, but it's higher. I know because when I come down to my office, I'm like, it's cold as fuck down there. When I'm in Kate's office, it, it genuinely feels like I'm in like a tropical region of the world. Like right now, is 75 in my office? My thermostat is set to 71. I don't know why it's 75 down here. Probably because I exercised for two hours. I was putting out a little bit of heat. I don't know how much heat a human being puts out when they exercise, but... Plus the PC, sure, plus the PC. How are you not sweltering? I don't know, you just get used to it, I guess. People from Ohio love to be like, that's a little hot for me. Yeah, it's fucking minus 30 in the wintertime where you are. It's inhospitable for human beings. Like, how did people live there before the invention of... This is for my brother. I'm gonna rape you. What's the... What's, ins what's insulation made out of? <laughs> it's not polyester. 
Fiberglass! Fiberglass! I've lost all my momentum. But I'm immune to electric shocks. Can you build up a tolerance to anything? Like, obviously you can build up a tolerance to drugs. You can build up a tolerance to alcohol. You can build up a tolerance to discomfort. Can you build up a tolerance to, to being fucking electrically shocked? Like, can you get resilient to shocks? To the point where a shock that would kill the, uh, the average person would just feel, like, mildly unpleasant to you? You know, you ever hear the story of Mithridates? The dude who was so paranoid about being poisoned that he drank a little bit of poison every day? And then, like, the Romans were sieging his kingdom. And he was like, well, I'm fucking tapped, bro. I gotta end it. So he tried to kill himself, but he had built up too much of a tolerance to the poison, so he, he couldn't die. That shit didn't happen, right? That's like a Herodotus fib. There's no way the dude was like, I'm gonna die. Let me do, let me try to do the thing to end my life that I've been trying to protect myself with for the last 10 years. Couldn't he just, like jump off of the damn ziggurat or something? I don't know what kind of tall buildings they had in Rome. Like, or in the Mithridatic kingdom. Like an aqueduct or something, surely. Herodotus did cook sometimes? Yeah, with artificial fucking sweetener. Okay, you pretty much cooked me, brother. I'll just level with you on that one. Also, poise. You ever hear of, you ever hear of a little stat called poise? Clearly not. Ludwig playing Dark Souls 1, going up against Havel, be like, Poise! You know what I'm talking about? This squeaks ass joke. Stop coming one at a time. Me at the gangbang. But I got an appointment afterwards that I can't miss. <laughs> come on, come on, hurry it up! Your weapon, wide open. By the way, I don't know if VIP Daniel's here. You know how you made that uh, Sufjan Stevens one last week? The, the lyric card from Rap Genius? Yeah, I still call it Rap Genius. I still call it Twitter, too. You got a problem? So it's, it's a similar vein. The Sufjan Stevens one that says, I'm not fucking around. Great reaction image. I need one from the Incubus song, Pardon Me. And it's, it's easy because it's like the very first lyric in the song. I need Incubus's face the lead singer of Incubus, and I needed to say, pardon me while I burst, okay? It's the first lyric in the song. It's not even a, a sneak cut or anything like that. He literally says, pardon me while I burst, end sentence. And then I would love to use that um, when there's good news on Twitter that I would like to respond to. This weekend, I went to a Halloween party dressed as Gerard Way. Everybody guessed wrong. I heard examples from Elvis to Jimi Hendrix. All right. I mean, in order, I, I feel for you, but I also feel like we need to see um, the costume in order to know whether the error is on their side or on your side. I also feel like to some extent, that's kind of on you. Because Gerard Way, obviously like a, a very famous artist, but at the same time, it's not the kind of artist that is like, Oh, he was Jimi Hendrix. Okay, never mind. People thought you were Gerard Way when you were Jimi Hendrix. I was gonna say Jimi Hendrix is in that... The kind of musicians you could probably go as for Halloween and expect people would get it. A lot of people, I think, would guess Gerard Way, but... Uh, I wouldn't expect everybody to just know it, you know? Because it's not like 2008 anymore. As much as that might hurt to hear. If I win as prince, my future political career would be dashed? What do you mean? Are you running for, like, governor of Wisconsin or something? By the way, does... Um, Wisconsin hate Minnesota? Or is it, like, one of those, like, they have a rivalry? What if they're running for mayor of Minneapolis? Well, that's... The joke wouldn't make sense, bro. Because Prince is beloved in Minnesota. He's the prodigal son. So if you were running for governor of Minneapolis, and they were like, check it out, leaked Halloween costume, this dude dressed as Prince. I'm just gonna say it wouldn't be a Justin Trudeau moment. People would hold you up and canonize you as the chosen son. 
It's crazy that Bob Dylan is from Minnesota too. I didn't know that. You know what's crazy for me is that Willem Dafoe is from uh, Wisconsin. That dude does not look like he's from Wisconsin. I saw a tweet that was like, it's crazy that Willem Dafoe isn't from like Liechtenstein. I was like, that shit is true. This dude definitely looks Liechtensteinian from like Luxembourg or something like that. The fact that he's just from Wisconsin is like, it's, it's fucking with my mind. It's crazy Jack Nicholson is from New Jersey. That is a dude with like Los Angeles written all over him. Everything about Jack Nicholson screams Los Angeles. <clears throat> Over the past three years, hang on. Over the past three years, the prize pool has gone from 40 million to 19 million to 3 million. That seems like in line with my awareness of the popularity of Dota. It's because Valve scaled down the compendium. They probably, you know, they're worried about the next tax season because they're making like a hundred million dollars a day in Counter-Strike crate sales. Scaled downs, putting it lightly. They don't sell the crates, they sell keys. I mean, they sell crates too, bro. They go look at the marketplace. You ever think about... <laughs> Listen, I'm not trying to start a revolution here, okay? Just think about it from the... I can completely understand, I guess, what I'm trying to say. It's annoying that other game launchers exist, but I'm not surprised they made them. You, think, you make a game, it comes out on Steam, Valve takes 30% up front? They didn't, they didn't do anything, man! It's a website! 30%?! I mean, that's like the same thing people are railing on, like, Apple for. When Gaben does it, they're like, based, he owns a submarine. And he plays TF2. They provide a lot of service. Yeah, I'm hoping maybe next year they find it in their heart to add, like, uh, support. Plus, every time I get a fucking receipt from Steam, it's always like, congratulations for your purchase from, like, fucking GBH3264 Benelux. And I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? You live in Washington State. Why is your company headquartered in Luxembourg? It doesn't make any damn sense. Except for the obvious reason. <laughs> It's like when I get a, a letter from Google and that shit is from like Delaware. I'm like, bro, your whole thing is, it's Silicon Valley. Oh yeah, but our documents live in Delaware. Okay, sure, whatever you gotta tell fucking J. Edgar Hoover. You see the new shooter, the finals? Yeah, you gotta be insane. First off, I played it. I played it for two hours, six months ago when they did like their alpha. It's too late. Like, I, I, in my life, it's too late in my life to start playing a game like that. The shit was moving too fucking fast, and too much shit was happening at all times. It's, that's fine. You know, it's like the same way. I'm not gonna drink the charged lemonade. You know, I, that time in my life has just passed me by. I am also, it's just not, it's not built for me. Blood realized he's not built for this, but also, I'm okay with that. I've come to terms with that. Maybe it would help with this boss. Hey, DL Guiga, maybe if you did some rides with us in the morning, it would help you with your output. This dude's talking shit. You know DL Guiga on the weekend? Everybody's gangster in the inter-ride period, okay? He said, hey, NL. He came to me. He, he begged. Hey, King. It would be nice if we could get the stack in advance. Some days, I don't have time to start at the same time as you guys, which is totally fair. But I still want to do all the rides. So if you give me the stack, it would help me out a great deal in that regard. Okay, absolutely no problem. Gave him the stack in advance last night. Who joined us for one ride today? Two rides. DL Guiga. Come on. Yeah, we got capos in the, in the damn Discord that... Oh, this is bad. Linked all the rides so they're easy to stack. Now it doesn't matter. Like, if, if, I don't care if you do one ride. I don't care if you do 20 rides. But like at the same time, you're going to come back out here and, and talk smack about me having a problem with this boss? I mean, brother, all you had to do this morning was pedal your damn legs. Now, I understand that, you know, the best laid plans of mice and men, it doesn't always work out like that, but... 
I'm just saying you got to be careful with the discourse. Hot take, I would buy a Peloton, but I can't stand listening to mediocre music for 90 minutes a day. Hot take, my ass fucking does not care. Tell it to the damn judge. I don't care if your ass exercises. I care if like my dad exercises. I want him to be in good health as he enters senior age. But you're just like a guy. I mean, I think you should want to be like in good shape for you and the people around you, but like... Why are you going out here poking needles in other people's balloons? Thank you for posting the stack in advance. It will be helpful when I'm less busy. Okay. Now, the, the nice guy in me would like to apologize for what I just said, the El Guiga. The mean guy in me who doesn't know when to keep his mouth shut is going to say, aren't you having an, a, a baby in six weeks? Does he know? But that's, it's not meant to be rude. It's just meant to be good-natured banter, okay? I'm just waiting for the reply to see if it went too far. <laughs> me, oh. Me when Ali Love adds Skrillex to the playlist because Monster is in the title. I've never really heard that many Skrillex songs. I've heard Bangarang. I did not know that in that Skrillex song, he samples Nintendo 64 Kid. Is it possible that the 2010s are like the worst <laughs> era for culture in human history? <laughs> Sorry, you like what you like. It's okay. I'm just saying. I was pedaling to the damn music. I hear, oh my god! Like a seven year old kid in the background. He's gonna be laughing. Not to mention the ludicrous song that, that samples, um, it's, it's like references Austin Powers like 50 times. What the hell were we doing in the 2010s, man? LMFAO was the most popular band in the world. My ass is so ready to have a baby and tell you it's not that much work. Sounds like you're ready to be the... to get that world's greatest dad mug. <laughs> also, I saw the message the first time, DL Guiga. Let's just chill out, okay? When the normies are spamming their messages trying to get it read, you know, I get it. But you got the VIP badge next to your name. I see it every time it comes up. You don't even... you don't gotta do the control A, control C, control V, okay? It's unbecoming of a VIP. Hey, I, by the way, I was never a ludicrous uh, guy, really. My favorite ludicrous, ludicrous track is, um... I like O by Ciara. And he, he has the verse, uh, the, the feature, I should say, in the middle of that song. But how did we let ludicrous get so popular for the song Hose in Different Area Codes? The dude is literally just saying numbers the whole song. 713212 Hey look at me now look back at you 910334 I'm up on a chair I'm down on the floor like it's just it's it's awesome it's not <laughs> it's not awesome okay in my opinion as someone who was not into Ludacris in advance of the Ludacris ride today I was wondering how the hell we let Ludacris get so popular okay I got nothing against him but I was like, this goofy-ass rapper has, like, an Austin Powers-themed rap song, and then one where he just says numbers, and then one where he just talks about driving really fast and wanting, wanting bitches to move and get out the way. Is that why your output was ass? Mods, host DL Guiga's output today. Can I tell you what it's like to be a uh, Northern Lion on a Peloton ride these days? It's great riding with the egg card, and I'm having a fantastic time. Basically what it is, is every ride, they elect one champion to go like hard as fuck and then beat me by 10 output. And I give them a high five. I say, great job. I'm sure your legs are tired. Next ride, I ride at almost exactly the same output that I rode in the first ride. And then the person who beat me by 10 kilojoules, which is like 3%, loses to me by like 120 on the next ride. But it doesn't matter because a new champion from the rabble has been elected. And that person, who I beat by 110 on the first ride, then comes out and beats me by 10 on the next one. Okay, Oven Heat, you're, you're in a different class, okay? You and, you and I, you, me, and Moomin Rider, I think we keep it a buck with each other.
But you go, once you find yourself in this like fourth, fifth place, like the middle of the pack, take a close look, okay, at the, at the outputs that you see here. People will be averaging like 230 ride one. Ride two, they're like, I'm not really feeling it. How about a 176? It's their prerogative, don't get me wrong. I'm just saying, don't catch yourself talking shit in the Twitch chat afterwards. Like, Keith Jr. is keeping it very respectful. Keith Jr. is on my wheel the whole time. They threw me a bone in the, uh, in the low impact ride, which I appreciate. How do so many NL viewers have Palatons? I actually think, no joke, we're becoming like, maybe not one of the most, uh, one of the largest Peloton sub-communities, but I definitely think we are becoming like one of the most active. I also feel like we're, I think we're getting a reputation. Because there will be times we'll do a ride that came out like six months ago. When I join the ride, there's one other person in it. And then within like five seconds, 12 members of the egg carton come in and just fucking go crazy. There were 17 riders this morning. I know, it's nuts. It's getting out of good. You just can't imagine like all these like middle-aged like pillow for wine people when they're on their 30 minute like comfort ride then all of a sudden like 16 people in their 20s and 30s who are hyper competitive jump in and start like just, like quadrupling their output immediately we are we're, we're a gang man we're even listening to hardcore gangster rap like ludicrous he's talking about doing all sorts of fucked up crimes he said the speed limit's 50 i'm going 100 that's fucking insane that's 160 kilometers an hour Nobody needs to be driving that fast, Ludacris. I guess Mel Brooks would call that ludicrous speed. <laughs> oh, man. Anyway. Yeah, okay, all right. What, you know what do British people say when they're, like, really mad at somebody? They're going to kill them. They say, like, on your bike then. Get, uh, get on your bike then or whatever. You... Did you see that British guy on the podcast who claimed he knocked out Mike Tyson in a bar fight in, like, 2008? The elms right, they all come in and look around. I don't know what I was looking for, looking behind the curtains. I thought, what are you looking for? I spit over the top. With that, I see Mike come in. So I've got up. I said, oh, I, I, hello, Mike. Nice to meet you. I said, uh, I'm a friend of Joe Egan's. I said, it's an honor to meet you. I said, would you like a drink? He went, nah. He said, uh, nah, you're all right. I said, listen, I don't mind buying everyone one. I said, I, you know, you're one of, my, one of my heroes. Nah, nah, you're all right, mate. I thought, you fucking shit. Done me head in, I thought. Anyway, so he ordered a fucking good round. He went, the white boy's getting here. I said, am I fuck? I can't remember exactly what was said, but I grabbed the ashtray. I thought, fuck this. Anyway, so it was a big commotion. They sort of all had him. Anyway, he was shouting and screaming something. I didn't say no more. I just had the, the glass ashtray in my hand. I was going to smash it straight in the head with a glass ashtray. About 40 body of security banks or whatever. So he went, you're lucky. I said, how boy am I lucky? I said, I ain't fucking lucky. I said, he's expected to knock me out. Imagine if I'm not that kind of out. So I just thought, what have I got to lose? I'm going to get, you know, you're, you're expected to get knocked out, in you? So I just thought, fuck it. So I just grabbed the ashtray. But why? He's having it, the cunt. It, was, it wasn't... <laughs> it wasn't like 1996, right? Like, it wasn't when, when the dude was out of his mind, but still. He was like, he was in a pub in England, probably in fucking Ipswich or something like that, causing problems. And he was like, you know, I... I sat him down. British people go hard in the pub. Isn't that a Waka Flocka Flame song? I go hard in the mother freaking pub. No shot, that guy knocked out Mike Tyson. I mean, I, I hope that we're all on the same page there, that there's a very little chance that this middle-aged British guy knocked out Mike Tyson, even past Mike Tyson's prime. But that does remind me, did you see the video where the guy is talking to John Fetterman? And then a guy dressed like John Fetterman kicks him out of the, the function? Why? 10,000 people in Gaza have been killed. Half are children. The Pope's calling for a ceasefire. The UN is called for it. I'm just asking you. You're a good guy. I voted for you. I know you're a nice guy. This is important. Here, can I give you a phone? Like what? I, what was he wearing, man? 
he, he was wearing like a bald cap and basketball shorts. He was like a, <laughs> like a body double. <laughs> Why does John Fetterman stand like he's a Sith Lord? I think it's, um, I think it's like tall guy problems. Even, I'm not tall, but sometimes I don't know what to do with my hands. Like, hands on your sides makes you feel like you're a fucking golem or something like that. And then hands in your pockets is like, now it's Kevin James coded. You're like, but then you, some people do the thumbs in the pocket. And I'm like, all right, Brooks and done. You're trying a little too hard. But then if you put your hands behind your back, it's like Ajashi in the H Mart looking for like what the best persimmon to buy is. Like you're examining every single persimmon in the pile. And then arms in front of you is, you know I had to do it to him, Lucky Luciano. And then arms crossed is like, I'm not buying what you're selling, brother. Like every single bit of body language has an, an inference associated with it that's kind of annoying. Hands on the belt? Okay, Ted Cruz. And then the worst is if you're in like a group with a, a bunch of people, then like you hit a pose and then you look around and realize that every other motherfucker also has their arms crossed and you're like, well, I'm not going to be the, the eighth dude to arms cross. I got to start rocking a new pose. You find yourself out here like Jamie Lee Curtis, like one elbow kind of cocked on the side or something like that. I, I kind of switch based on the demographic that I'm talking to. If I'm talking to like 60 plus men, this is for my I do the, you know, I got to do it to them. Because A, they don't know what that is. And B, I think they find that like a respectful pose to be listening in. But you can't, if you're talking to someone from Gen Z, you can't hit him with the lucky Luciano. Because they're going to be like, what is this guy cooking? Uh, you're backstabbed? Who did a 180 so fast? Who do you think you are? Elvis Stoiko? Help. On your, on your bike, on your bike, chaps. <laughs> just check the settings on your phone while you're talking. No, this shit is disrespectful. Put your phone in your pocket. Hey, also, I, I'm excited to say I figured out um, a way to roast Gen X. Gen X is always like, they're like the flood in Halo 1. Like, they're always out here, like, taking snipes at Gen Z, like, they're the Covenant, taking snipes at Millennials, like, they're the Marines. And then they, like, go slink back into the shadows. You can't make fun of me. I'm a latchkey kid. My parents both work jobs. <laughs> okay, fucking generation that uh, goes out for fun times with their family with two fucking AirPods in, listening to sports games they gambled on. What's wrong with you? So many 50-year-old men out there in public with airpods on hanging out with their wife and kids the hell is wrong with you you know that motherfucker's got like family first in his twitter bio too should make it make sense talking about yourself absolutely not you fucking fan duel vip it's because you're offended at a joke you can't say like no it says you you got to come up with like you got to jeet kundo it you got to do like a riff on it It'd be like at least at least I have hair. Like, at least there's something to that one, you know? First off, I don't even have AirPods. That's another thing you make fun of me for. I use Galaxy Buds because I'm in the Android ecosystem. Secondly, I mostly just check the scores the next day. Thirdly, when I'm out with my family, I'm talking to my family. I'm not like, oh, I got to... Oh, sorry, honey. I can't pay close attention this week. My team's two and four. Like, fucking... Relax, bro. You root for the Houston Texans. Like, nothing important is going to happen. Oh, Christian McCaffrey just got 91 total rushing yards today. Sir, your kid is uh, performing Swan Lake right now. He's goaded. Yeah, he's on my fantasy team. I have... Uh, my fantasy team's pretty good. I'm not going to brag too much. I got Patrick Mahomes, Tyreek Hill, Christian McCaffrey... Trevor Lawrence, Josh Allen, Russell Wilson, Randy Moss, Marvin Harrison, LaDainian Tomlinson, Odell Beckham Jr., Jack Marius, Trick Dara Tracks. <laughs> it's a three team league. No, I'm solo. I'm PVE. Solo play. Travis Kelsey, Tony Gonzalez, Shannon Sharp, 
Terrell Davis, Bill Rowanowski, John Elway. I got them all, man. Bart Starr, fucking the first dude to wear a leather hat instead of just nothing on his head. You know what I want to see? I want to see, like, the first left tackle in football history. You think that motherfucker was, like, 5'5", 130? It must have been funny as hell. <laughs> Like he's the biggest guy in the town. <laughs> we call him Fatso. His BMI is underweight. He's the tallest man in the village. He's five foot eight. He eats a quarter chicken for dinner. If you're living in villages at the time. I think it's crazy that we're still living. You think a day takes 24 hours like somebody living in a cave 300 years ago. I have three days. My first day, 6 a.m. to noon. My second day, noon to 6. My third day, 6 to midnight. So I, have, I live three days in the time that you live one day. You stack that up over the course of the week, I beat you. You stack it up over the course of a month, you're toast. You stack it up over five years, I'm living in a completely different reality. Relax, here comes the blue boy. We got the wobbling, we got the what? You know what I'm talking about? Anyone else play My Singing Monsters this weekend? Hey, yo, My Singing Monsters? Yeah, my kids started playing My Singing Monsters. It's actually kind of like a... Not a horrible video game. If you're gonna let your three-year-old kid play video games. You buy a little monster, and then it, it's like Cookie Clicker. It's kind of like an incremental game. It takes um, a few hours for your monster to generate some uh, coins, and then you click on it, you get some coins. And then you buy another monster with those coins, and then you generate, you know, you get the idea. Plus, you can compose some music. My little brother gave me a three-hour tour of all his islands. I feel that. <laughs> Does it have microtransactions? Of course it has microtransactions, but um, I think... We bought like a $4.99 fucking incomprehensible currency pack and that went ad free for life. And I was like, that's fine. Big Blue Games has got to make money somehow. Chibli was playing it last year. <laughs> that doesn't surprise me. <laughs> hello, Justin, by the way. I know we've been talking, but uh, hello as well. Sorry I sent you a message this weekend that said party animals is mid, now eat this Wemby. Something just came over me. I got kind of an addiction to telling people to eat this Wemby. If you're not familiar, Victor Wembayama is uh, he's the number one draft pick in the NBA from the previous summer. And uh, he's insanely tall. So I think it's funny to... Whenever you disagree with someone and you want to have the last word, you tell them to eat this Wemby. And then you post a picture of like a seven foot six. I say this with all due respect, like a seven foot six alien from another world. But like, how are you supposed to continue an argument after someone told you to eat this Wemby? Like, it, it you just can't. It can't be done. Is he still playing with the Listerine? We got rid of that. We got rid of that some time ago. We should probably use the weapon we got for beating. The Lizard King, Robert California. Don't shock me, I, I need to get an ult, bro. Why don't you grow, go eat a decroated piece of crap? If you don't like it, Napoleon, you can leave. How much you want to make a bet I can throw a football over them mountains? Hang on, I forgot the crystals. Are you, this is like a dollar an hour. Do the chickens have large talons? Are you drinking 2% because you think you're fat? Because you're not. You could drink whole milk if you wanted to. He said peak millennial. Peak millennial humor is just references, LOL. Yeah, peak Gen Z humor is like, oh yeah, that funny person isn't funny. Why? Oh, they voted for Mitt Romney 11 years ago. Two can play that game. He will not divide us, okay? Now eat this Wemby. We got the Wemblin, we got the Wemblin. <laughs> Anyone else think that the My Singing Monsters arc is the worst arc in NL history? Shut the fuck up. It's a good game or something, I don't know. 
Did you bet the over on Wemby blocks per game? Uh, no, everyone addicted to sports gambling should stop immediately. It's not enough to just turn on the television and see the tallest motherfucker in history dribble a basketball. You gotta be like, oh, I juiced it up a little bit. I bet he's gonna touch the ball 11 times this quarter. Like, you gotta let your dopamine return to base levels, man. You're not doing your brain any favors. Anyone else think the Covenant is the best arc in history? Great, great little banter topic there. That's a good point. You don't really hear that much about any arc except for two. Noah's and the Covenant. Noah has been real quiet since the Covenant came out. <laughs> Noah heads be like, hey, Bungie Studios, you ever consider naming the aliens in your game the Noah's? <laughs> so fucking stupid. So dumb. Uh, what is he talking about? Well, the aliens in Halo are called the Flood. Or sorry, the Covenant. <laughs> there are the Flood too, but we don't. They're not relevant for this situation. And there's also an Ark called the Ark of the Covenant. So the joke is like, what if there were people who love Noah's Ark that were like pissed off that the Ark of the Covenant is getting so much press after they've had Ark dominance for like, you know, since Methuselah times. It's true, too, because the Flood could exist to fight the Noahs. It's like they weren't even... They weren't even thinking straight, man. That was the, a very important block. Pardon him while he bursts, times two. So true? We're gonna win this time. I'm not fucking around, Sufian Stevens. I'm not fucking around. It's from his newest album. Came out 11 years ago. It's called Alarska. Comma, how I learned to stop worrying and love the puffin. C colon, oh my god. <laughs> Justin, you a big Sufian Stevens head? You know what must annoy you? Everyone knows that you're hardcore. So you listen to hardcore music. I bet when people, when you tell people that you like something a little bit more delicate, they're always like, whoa, I didn't think this would be up your alley. As if you can like only listen to music that's like, you know, 106 BPM or higher or something like that. Like if you're ever like, oh, I like a little bit more of like a moody, so oh, I like a song that has electronic influences. People are probably like, what? Justin like Sigur Ross? I can't believe that, man. Oh, I didn't peg you for a for a Bjork enjoyer or something like that. I bet you have to deal with that a lot. You don't? All right. Well, agree to disagree. I think you do. <laughs> I do have to deal with people assuming that I hate all music just because I don't like the garbage they like. Okay. Let him cook. But also, you did put the Beatles in like the same tier of, when you did your all music tier list, you put the Beatles in the worst tier with like every band that is like Creed and fucking like Imagine Dragons and stuff like that. And then you put Joan Jett in like the second highest tier. And I was like, what is this? What is he doing, man? Like Joan Jett? I get, Bad Reputation's a good song. It's just a shame they only play her other song, I Love Rock and Roll. What's wrong with Joan Jett? What's right with Joan Jett? Like, bowling alley ass music? Also, problematic. Doesn't, he, doesn't she say like, you know, I'm standing over there by the record machine. A squimmy dum dum dum. I could tell right away he was no older than 17. The Beatles wouldn't do that shit. And now, what about uh, I saw her standing there? What do you mean, what about I saw her standing there? She was just 17, if you know what I mean. Yeah, 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 okay. But Paul McCartney wrote that shit when he was like uh, fucking 16 and a half. So it's. Uh, have, have her age plus, he was like, he was, it was after his 16th birthday, before too long, I'm in love with her. 
No, he was not 35. The Beatles broke up when that dude was like 21 years old. People aged faster back then. Have you ever looked at a photo? They didn't know about skincare back then. <laughs> so look at this photograph. Don't even start with me. I, I'm in the same boat. You know what it is, and you know, I'm glad you're here so we can talk about this openly. Is like you can't say to someone that you have shit taste in music, but you can like think it and know it. Someone will be like, oh, my favorite song is like fucking Hey There Delilah by the Plain White Tees. And in order to maintain a good ecosystem in chat, you gotta be like, oh, really? That's not really my jam. But then like an hour later, you know, they're like, <laughs> Like, do you like anything? Well, I just fucking don't like Hey There Delilah. It's fucking... We don't need to get into it, but I don't think it's very good. Oh, you don't like Hey There Delilah? You know what it happens with me all the time? Is when I say I don't ever want to hear Don't Stop Believing by Journey again. People are like, come on! Bro, it's, it's like the best song. You don't like the best song? Come on! What do you like then? Like, they're immediately like, Oh, what's your favorite song then, motherfucker? Oh, some shit I've never heard of, probably, because I'm too busy at Applebee's. He likes Wolf Parade. Hey, hey, I told you that in confidence. Don't use that against me. Why is Applebee's catching strays? It's top of mind because I saw a tweet about that, like, 3.7 earthquake uh, in San Francisco. And they interviewed somebody. And they called him six-year resident of, uh, of the Bay Area. And uh, he was talking about how he was slamming Dollaritas at the Applebee's in Fisherman's Wharf when he felt the earthquake. And then, dude, I was, I realized San Francisco might be the only place on earth that has crazier internet denizens than Vancouver. Everybody in the comments was like, six year resident, lol. Like he's not like a real San Franciscan. The dude's lived there for it's probably like a quarter of his life. He's not considered a, a San Francisco. He's only lived there for six years. Oh, but your parents fucked in Height Ashbury. All of a sudden, you're like the mayor of, of San Francisco. Make it make sense. I was conceived in the Cheesecake Factory in Pioneer Square. This dude's a fraud. Like, just relax. Also, everybody was like, 3.7, I remember when I was here for the fucking 8.7. I was like, oh, fucking people died. Shit was rattling off the walls. I'm like, what do you want him to do? He's getting interviewed by some fucking hack local news station outside of the Applebee's. What do you want him to be like? You want him to be as online as you are? First off, I know other people have been through earthquakes that are more serious than this. Shut the fuck up, bro. Stop commenting. Your brain is cooked. You need to talk to another human being, not a screen, for like five minutes. You're like, <laughs> you're lost. No, the Dollarita dude did not vote for Mitt Romney. He's like 24. His ass was in the sixth grade during the 2012 presidential election, okay? He probably has no idea who Paul Ryan even is. Now, he knows everything about the Red Scare podcast. I'm not going to dispute that. Goated Halloween costume for this year, Ken Bone. Good, good choice. <laughs> just, just, dude, you know it would be great. So you show up in the fucking sweater with the, the the shirt on top and the mustache, and everyone goes, "Who the fuck are you?" And you go, "Oh wait, oh wait a second. Then you pull out some pregnant porn and just start beating it, and they're like, "Oh, Ken Bone." All right, that guy, Ken Bone. I remember. 2016 undecided voter. Ken <laughs> Bone. <laughs> Wait, was that, was, maybe that was 2012? Sorry, I don't know. No, that must have been 2016, right? It's, it's been a long decade or whatever. No, it was 2016. The idea of being an undecided voter in October 2016 is so fucking funny. The fact that there was like someone in the Venn diagram who's like, I don't know, they both make some pretty good points. He offers cameos now? I, I got nothing against it. I'm not rooting for the demise of Ken Bone or anything. It's just, it just reminds you the world is made up of all sorts of people. Whenever you're like, does this guy exist? Guy who's equally jazzed by both Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump and also loves pregnant pornography? Yeah, motherfucker, there's like 400 million people in America. 
There's probably like eight of those guys out there. And what's crazy is you'll never meet that guy, probably, but every guy you meet is a different kind of guy. Because we're all so unique. No one you meet is normal. It's an aggregate of individuals that creates normalcy. Everybody's got their own like one in a billion sort of constellation of personality traits. That you would be like, huh, I wouldn't have expected that. And what's, I'm not aware of what mine are, honestly. But I'm sure I'm, I'm unique in my own ways. Bald Canadian streamer who will only put mustard on his sandwich if it comes in a squeeze bottle because I ain't got the time to get a knife dirty. And <laughs> I was going to say, and jerks off to pregnant porn. <laughs> I love you. The, the, end, the end state of the bit is every single one ends with jerks off to pregnant porn. <laughs> guy who orders a California roll at the sushi restaurant. Guy, guy who gets a Coke Zero and then pours his own sugar into it and jerks off to pregnant porn. Why the Trump impression? That's not a Trump impression. Is it? Ghibli, Olivia Munn, pregnant pornography people. People are beating it to pregnant women in this country. Some people think it's based. Some people think it's sad. But I don't know. <laughs> Just more goes into the bees at this point. It's not a good impression. Hear me out here. We need a Taft-style president again. Just a big guy. Like that's, when I ask you, what, what do you know? Just kill me. When I ask you, what do you know about Richard Nixon? You're gonna talk my ear off. I ask you, what do you know about Joe Biden? You're gonna talk my ear off? I say, what do you know about Taft? First thing every motherfucker's gonna say is he's fat. We need a president like that. We need a, we need a, a caricature. Wait, no, hey, hang on one second. We need a simple guy, okay? We just need a simple guy. Just a guy with like a, a physical characteristic where you're like, that could give him a nickname. Yeah, or like a really, really tall president, like a seven foot tall president or something like that. Yeah, Wemby, exactly. Vote this Wemby. <laughs> we had too many like old guys in a row. We need, get, get some new material, okay? What about like a, we haven't had a president who always wears a hat for a while, right? Like, president who wears baseball hat inside all the time. And then you're like, oh, he's probably ashamed of his hairline. But then he takes off his hat, and his hair looks fucking great. And you're like, what? And he's like, I don't know, man. I just like wearing a hat. We? Little bro, you're not on the team? I'll still vote, probably. You know, it's it's my right, right? I find a swing state, one that's I, one that's purple on the Nate Silver model, and then I just fucking take a bus down there and, <laughs> and cast my <laughs> cast my ballot for my dude, get a president who's wearing a hat at all times, even though his hairline is fantastic. Repeat that six or seven times, and then I mean that's pretty much my whole November right there. I mean, there's, we're still electing 21st century presidents. That's what I'm trying to, or, sorry, 20th century presidents. That's what I'm trying to say. Old guy, politician, businessman. Like we should be moving beyond, we should be trying some, some 21st or even 22nd century presidents. I'm just spitballing here. We need a hat guy, that's a given. Certainly we need a vaping president because vaping interests have not been represented well. YouTuber president, I don't want to be it for the record, but sure, I'd probably vote for any YouTuber. They got a pretty good track record. Cryptocurrency president, yeah. <laughs> Coco Melon president, iPad kid president. Yeah, we're due, man. We're due. VTuber president, let's not go crazy. How about like, a, like an enlightened president? You know, I'm sick of this, like, they're like a bad guy when they're in office, and then when they get out of office, they're like, oh, my fucking, I gotta atone for my sins. You know, George W. Bush is like, sorry for starting all those wars, I paint now. Bill Clinton's like, sorry for starting all those wars, I'm a vegan. What about like a vegan, like a president who is vegan, and then when they leave office, 
They're like, life's too short. I'm getting back on the damn meat train. What wars did Clinton start? Fucking cola wars, bro. This run is not cooked. Okay, relax. Storage wars? No, I think that's from the Bush era. Yup! Are you a yeah or a yup sort of guy? I'm, I'm a yeah sort of guy. I, you would not catch my ass saying yup. Unless I'm talking to Chibli. In which case I take on some of his mannerisms. And now the kind of guy to say the jig is up, pal? No, I don't think so. I'm not that kind of... I'm the, I'm the well, well, well guy. I, I am kind of the guy to maybe say what do we have here. If we're talking about stuff that's in the same vein. And now the kind of guy to say ope when he bumps into you. Now that is definitely true. I am the kind of guy to say ope if, if I bump into you. But in all likelihood, I'm very aware of other people around me when I'm outside. So you probably bumped into me. But I'm going to say ope anyway. Because I'm going to assume that it was a, a mistake made in good faith. I realize though, as I approach middle age, I have to get better at, at quipping with strangers. You always gotta have like, let me give you an example, okay? I was raking leaves on Saturday. 70 year old man walked by me. I deferred to him, I showed respect. I stopped raking, I said, hey, good morning. He said, good morning. Then he looked at me and said, you missed a spot. Now it's funny because the whole fucking yard was covered with leaves. That's the joke. And I, I didn't have a comeback. My comeback was like, yeah, I think I missed a few. Have a good day. Because I was like, you, that was my, me resigning from the interaction. I'm like, man, I got I to gotta build up like a dictionary of that shit. You missed a spot. That's a good one. Of course, my ass will... I'll probably try that. It's like curb your enthusiasm, right? I'll walk by his house and be like, hey, how's it going? By the way, you missed a spot. And he'll be like, it's... I have a big yard, dude. I've been doing this for a long time. You know, my son was supposed to help me out with this, but I guess he's too busy. And I, oh, fuck. Sorry. I'm sorry. You should have asked him where. I mean, I think I, I, it's not a bad idea to just let him win the first interaction with this quip. But I need to have my own quips that I can pop on people. Like if they're raking leaves, you miss the spot. That's a good one. I'm writing that one down in my, in my death notebook. <laughs> How many fucking animes have a character called Kira? I haven't seen any of them. But apparently Death Note has a Kira. Jojo has a Kira. And then there's a movie called Akira. That I have seen. Because it's actually good. They do this really cool motorcycle slide. Did you know Akira broke his foot doing the motorcycle slide? Listen! Listen, Jack, how do I print from PDF? Can you do your best British accent? <clears throat> yes. Hello, governor. I'll pay you Tuesday for an hamburger today, I will. Please, mister, can I have some more? More? Oh, you're a wizard, Harry. It's the I'll pay you Tuesday for an hamburger today, sir. Please, I'm just a little street rat. I'm just an urchin, Dr. Holmes. Something like that. It's so good. You know what bothers me? If you do a more posh British accent, people from England are like, we don't all sound like that. Then you bust out the damn Oliver Twist, and they're like, offended. Okay, well, I'm going back to my damn BBC London accent then, okay? Thank, thank you, librarian. I mean, it's all, it's all just having a laugh. It's called the James Bond chord. Plays usually when James Bond does something cool like, Hey, yeah, Mr. Blowfield, come on into the barber shop. Jokes on you, you... <laughs> I'm not a barber, I'm James fucking Bond. Sides back and blow your fucking head off, eh? Today I'm gonna teach you about one of my favourite guitar chords known as the James Bond chord. It's, it usually happens after he says one of his infamous lines like, um, Oh, Mr. Goldfinger, yeah, come in. We've got space for you to have here. Come on, sit down here. Fucking joking, dickhead. I'm not really a barber. I'm fucking James Bond. Short back and blow your fucking head off. Twat! 
Can you do an American who lived for five years in London? Okay, this one is going to be offensive. But I always... Okay, this is like just straight up rude. But I always love when you meet somebody who studied abroad and then you find out that it was like England or Ireland. And they're always telling you like, oh, in Ireland they do shit like this. And I'm like, yeah, that's how we do it too, motherfucker. I was like, oh, and I, then, now listen, I'm victim to this too because I lived in South Korea, which is kind of like Asian America. I did have a housemaid in university who did a semester in Ireland, and she was like, in Ireland, everything is like this. And I'm like, it's the same shit. <laughs> no disrespect. I'm like, I eat a lot of stew over there. I'm like, wow. Crazy. Me too. Like, <laughs> it sounds nice. This is not an anti-Irish bit. I'm just saying, if you want the street cred for studying abroad, you gotta... You can't go to a country that's made a friends knockoff, okay? You can't go to the country that made the IT crowd and come back and be like, life's so different over there. Or you gotta go over there and work at a real Irish business, like a bog or a mine or like a, a tech company. <laughs> a real proper Irish institution, okay? A bog? They probably got bogs over there, I don't know. Now do a Canadian who lived in South Korea for a year. It's it's literally me. I can't do an impression of it. But what it what it manifests as is me trying to show off to my wife. So we'll go to like Hanam and I won't be like, oh, do you need rice cakes? I'll be like, hey, when we're at Hanam, do you need some tok? Hey, while we're here, do you, should we get some kimbap? It's always just just Hey, by the way, just in case you forgot, my ass knows like a little bit of Hongu. She corrects your pronunciation. She'll tell you my pronunciation is pretty good. It's not perfect, obviously. I was a little offended though. When we were in Hawaii, we bought Hawaiian shirts. And the person selling the shirts was Korean. She was talking to my wife in Korean. She was talking to other tourists in Korean. And I was like, I'm gonna get her good, okay? So when I... Paid for the shirts. She said thank you, and I said thank you, Kamsamnida. And then she went, "Oh, your pronunciation's not bad." And I was like, "What the fuck? I lived there for a damn year. Not bad." Like I, I really thought I was coming over the top rope, and she was gonna because that's the way that people in Korea reacted to you in 2011. At least it might have changed. But if you were white and you made like a little effort to speak Korean, it was like, oh my God, this is crazy. You are like the most talented individual I've ever, like they were basically just being patronizing. They're like, oh my God, you learned a word in the country you chose to live in. Thank you so much. That's that. I was expecting like a reaction like that, but she was not really having it. She wasn't in Korea? I know, that's why she should be even more impressed. She'd be like, what's your ass doing here? <laughs> She's like, a white guy in Hawaii knows a little Korean? She should have given me like a 25% discount or something. Just came back from Korea yesterday. They don't care now. It's better, okay? It, like, it's better this way. I always get so annoyed. Sometimes Kate watches like these Korean variety programs. And it's always like nine Korean people on the panel and then there's one white guy who speaks Korean fluently and I'm like I know why you're there it's like a it's not I mean it's like a little rude but it's always like it's not like wow this guy's really funny it's like holy every comment is always like wow this guy's from England and his Korean is so good I'm like have some respect you know how many Korean people I meet in Vancouver every day who speak better English than I do like you're a, you're a proper country, man. You shouldn't... Oh, I thought I was attacking you. You gotta make them work a little harder than that. I still... I know I've talked about it before, but there's that... There's a YouTuber who is like a YouTube ESL teacher, so he teaches like... Phrases that are difficult to understand if you didn't grow up speaking English, of which there are many. But then like for a while, he was not in Korea. He was in America, and his videos became like, you know... 
if you're in America, never go to this park. And they would like walk through like a park in Skid Row and be like, look at this, there's syringes and like it's scary here. And I'd be like, this is like, it's fear mongering. <laughs> like you, listen buddy, you stick to teaching people what the fuck a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush means, okay? Don't, and then people, I felt bad because people from Korea were like commenting and they're like, oh my God, I'm going to New York in the fall. Thanks for these survival tips. And I was like, you're, don't worry, your ass is not going to Gary, Indiana. You're gonna be fine. You're gonna go to Rockefeller Center. You're gonna go to the Empire State Building. You're gonna eat it like a sweet greens or so. You're gonna be okay. You got nothing to worry about. It's one of those like, hey, nobody talks shit about our countries but us, okay? Yeah, it's fucked up. It's the same way with, there's like YouTube channels that'll do like um, like 4K walkthroughs of the downtown east side in Vancouver. And I'm like, listen, buddy. Nobody does that but real Vancouverites, okay? Who have lived here for more than six years. Because six years is not enough to be considered a genuine resident, apparently, for some reason. JD Pones, you gotta be the most psychotic chatter. I recognize your name. You've been here for eight years. You're subscribed. Every message I've seen from you today is like, why isn't he paying attention? He needs to pay attention. This boss isn't that hard. Why is he having so much trouble? I mean, like, we gotta... Slash user. Let's look at some stats here, okay? Follower... Okay, followers since December 31st, 2021. Gen Z, that's cap. You definitely unfollowed and then refollowed. Been timed out five times, all by Nightbot, so that, that checks. NL needs to pay attention. Don't get decay. Thoughts on the reunification of Ireland. Remember when phase one was automatic? Why is NL struggling? Poison, poison dagger, poison dagger, gloves, dagger, shield and spike, shield and spike, shield, stone. Shield, rock combines with potion, rock and potion, stone, upgrade potion, stone next to potions, potions, potions. Hang, do this. Uh, do, listen, you've been around long enough. I'm glad you enjoy backpack battles. You've been around long enough to know that we banter, okay? We will beat the boss. But we got to ask ourselves, what's the rush? We're going to be on this earth for a long time, okay? God willing, at least. You never know. We'll beat it when we beat it. And when we beat it, I'll be sad. Because the, when the run in which you beat the boss is your only opportunity to demonstrate mastery. And as soon as you master it, guess what, motherfucker? You're back to being an amateur at some new shit again. You should enjoy the pursuit of perfection, however folly it is, while it lasts, okay? We have fun here. If you're not having fun, I understand that. There's plenty of stuff out there that I don't find entertaining. It's called cable television. <laughs> what I do is if I can turn that shit off. Oh, man. I'm like, you would not catch my ass watching like This Is Us, okay? You, what you would not do is find me on r slash This Is Us being like, why is this episode so bad? I'll be like, because it's on ABC, motherfucker. Did you know that scorpions have an anus on their tail? I was talking to Kate about this yesterday. Not the scorpion thing, but how people will just come to you if you have a degree in biology. They will just come to you with animal facts. And if you don't know it, they go like, huh. Like, like your fucking entire education was a waste. They'll just hit you with like, you know giraffes have like eight intestines? And I'm like, I didn't know that. And they're like, well, what are all those biology classes for? Hmm. It doesn't work that way for like other degrees. Like if someone studied music, you can't be like, oh, did you know uh, Stravinsky had ulcerative colitis? And they're like, oh, I didn't know that. We just played the music. I mean, uh-huh. Seems like, what, 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 I thought you went to school for music. Okay, one's down. Let me tell you about being a geologist. I'll just be honest with you. I don't even know what a geologist does. Haven't they discovered all the rocks by this point? Are they involved in early warning detection of like uh, earthquakes. Just, I don't want to anger the geologists. I, I just literally don't know what they do. I know they are involved in the study of rocks. <clears throat> what do they do? What does a geologist do? I'm assuming that you work in a laboratory and 
somebody comes in with a sample and then you hit it with like some and then you put it into like a spectrometer or something like that and you're like oh there's like fucking phosphorus in this phosphorus content 3% higher than anticipated and then NBC News is like cure for cancer found in unlikely rock and you gotta be like not yet Brian Gumbel not yet some, it's like all other sciences. Shungite founds. <laughs> As a geologist, do people ever ask you to look at rocks around the La Casa? Just got back. Did we beat the boss? You're just in time. <laughs> Did you watch Five Nights at Freddy's? I know Justin's not here, but I feel like I gotta talk about this with him. Obviously, I did not watch Five Nights at Freddy's. But I've never felt, I've almost never felt as out of touch as when um, I saw that it made like $80 million at the box office this weekend, which is a lot. I get that it's a horror movie and it's Halloween weekend, but when the movie was announced, I was honestly like, it's going to be a financial disaster. Normal people are not going to go to the movie theater to see Five Nights at Freddy's. What I didn't realize... There's a lot of weird motherfuckers out there. And they show out. <laughs> they, they, you gotta hand it to them. They did a great job. They showed all their support. They... I would not have thought that a Josh Hutcherson, Matthew Lillard horror movie could open to $80 million in 2023. And clearly, I'm the one that was wrong. Like, the numbers don't lie. Isn't $80 million kind of low? What the hell? Kevin Feige in the in the chat? It's pretty good for a Blumhouse Five Nights at Freddy's horror movie. Like, that's... For, for Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse 6, probably not, but... Did you know... <laughs> Kate did not like this take. But I stand by it. We watched the little Fantasia this weekend, okay? We're looking for stuff to watch on Disney Plus that might be like a little... Oh, what am I thinking? That might be a little spooky, but not so scary that like our daughter is scarred for life. So we watched Fantasia. I was looking up... I watched part of Fantasia. I was looking up uh, Fantasia on Wikipedia. Did you know that that movie, Adjusted for Inflation, is like the 23rd highest grossing film of all time? People in 1940 in America... Must have been bored as fuck. It's literally an orchestra performance with animation behind it. I'm not... <laughs> it was fine. It's a cool movie, right? Like, it's a, it's a spectacle. But I'm like, my ass goes to the orchestra sometimes. And I don't see any motherfucker there. Then some motherfucker with a Mickey Mouse tattoo is going to be like, Fantasia's my favorite movie. Oh, I missed you at uh, the Rite of Spring concert at VSO last month. Oh, that's because your ass only goes to the symphony when it's like Pokemon night? But Fantasia's your favorite movie? Yeah, okay. I'm just, I'm just saying. It's No Medea Goes to Hell. <laughs> that isn't out yet. No spoilers, please. It is crazy you could have watched Killers of the Flower Moon in this time. Did you, by the way, the perfect tweet drop this weekend. Oh, man. People talking about Killers of the Flower Moon needing an interruption or an intermission are so right. I just pissed myself watching the movie and now I got to sit in it for another three hours and 15 minutes. So good. It's perfect comedy. What's the joke? Well, the movie's three hours and 15 minutes long, I guess. That's what I inferred from it as the comedy enjoyer. Man, Librarian had that shit on a damn macro. I thought you were going to talk about the Avatar Halloween costume. Also very good. I did see that as well. Oh, you can't be the last one alive. Opinion on Victor Wembayama? Might be controversial. Um, I think he's the tallest man I've ever seen. Do tall people say thank you every day for the National Basketball Association existing? Like, they should be praying to God and saying, like, thank you, James Naismith, for inventing basketball. Because I think that were it not for the NBA, 
What would really tall people do? Like, if, if you were seven foot two in 1800, your ass was just like, they'd bring you out on the apple farm, right? They'd be like, yo, <laughs> Gronk, wake up, it's harvest day. You'd be like, uh. <laughs> yes, boss. Like, the NBA has turned really, really tall people into like, Superstars. I have to imagine being seven foot tall in the year 1800 carried like actually no benefits whatsoever. There was no basketball, man. First tall dude who picked up a basketball was probably like. He probably felt so powerful. You imagine being. James Naismith was probably like five foot ten, tallest motherfucker he'd ever seen in Orillia, Ontario. Some seven foot tall guy picked up a basketball and immediately, he was like Goku, dude. He's like the John Wick of basketball. I would love to be the first guy, who, first tall guy who played basketball. It's like the first guy with a watch. As we, I know it's a reused bit, but it must have felt so powerful. Or do you think it was annoying? He was like, why is everyone fucking late all the time? Just get a watch, bro. Yo, just get a watch. It's like the mo the greatest sum of money I've ever seen in my life. It's it's a pence and a half to buy a watch. Sure, sure. Let me just mortgage my yurt, buy a watch. I'm sure my wife and 35 kids will love that. When I come home and they're like, "Where's the gruel?" and I'm like, "No gruel tonight, honey. I bought a watch." Are you okay? I've been on this fight for three and a half hours, and the worst part about it, I say this with no joke. The worst part about it is this isn't even like that hard of a boss fight. It's just a marathon. Chibli, hello, by the way. Chibli. Chibli, is this the golden week, by the way? Is this New Zealand had uh, daylight savings, but we didn't? This is for my brother. I'm gonna rip your heart. It's piss week. <laughs> Me when going to the urologist. Just wait on this one. Me when going to the urologist. Uh, soy jack face. Open parentheses, it's piss week. How's that for a, a joke? I think that could go crazy on Twitter. Thousands of people desperately shouting, heal. Me. Me when I go to the urologist's office. Soy jack face, it's piss week. <laughs> it's piss week here on the Great British Bake Off. So true. Ah, oh, your piss was a little watery. Oh, really? Yeah. I do have a question about the like the Great British Bake Off. How do they know how to make all that shit? I'm just saying, like, if, if I went on the show, which I'm probably not the guy for that, if they had me, like, baking, a, if they were, like, make a chocolate chip cookie, I'd be like, all right, fucking flour, milk, eggs, chocolate chips, piss, whatever. I got it all. But sometimes they'd be like, make a financier. And I'm like, I don't even know what the hell that is. What do you think this is, brother? Wall Street? That's a different show. It's about the Wahlberg twins. You gotta go toe to toe sometimes. That's a big one. <laughs> Just relax. Everyone in this house, we chill a little. I broke half of your shit. That's bad. I, I, I've fallen for it a hundred times. Back it up. You gotta pick your moment here. That's not your moment. This might be your moment. Back it up. Back it up. Q. 
heal. Ulta's ass. Oh! <laughs> oh, easy mode. Lower the charge, attack, stamina, consumption one. Giving me enhanced pulse cell recovery two. Now gives us to phase four. It's pretty exciting for those Marvel heads among us. Phase four kind of mid. I think I've realized that we're just on the other side of the Infinity Saga. What I mean by that is like, it was unprecedented, and I bought in, it was unprecedented how many people bought in so much. They watched all the movies or almost all the movies. They followed every property associated with the MCU. It culminated in Infinity War and Endgame. And then as soon as they came out with like two mid movies after that, people were like, well, if they're all mid, I'm not going to watch all this shit just to know who the fuck Green Scroll is in the movie that comes out seven years from now. And it just totally died. Like I, partly I will say we had a kid like fall 2020. So I was like, maybe I'll see. Uh, I saw Shang-Chi and I was like, it's okay. But like, you got to impress me a little bit more than that. And then I was like, oh, maybe they, they don't miss twice in a row. So get like, how about the Eternals? And then the Eternals came out and everyone was like, it's the first bad one in like 17 years. And I was like, oh, I'll skip that one. And I watched Spider-Man and I was like, Spider-Man's pretty good. I really like Doctor Strange 2 and the Multiverse of Madness, but apparently that's anathema to the Marvel community because they're allergic to style. Anyway, long story short, apparently Wakanda forever, not very good, apparently Thor Love and Thunder, not very good. All the Disney Plus TV shows, every single one that I watched, I was, I was, except Loki, and WandaVision was pretty cool. But I watched season one of Loki, and I was like, I'm definitely watching season two. Well, that was like a year and a half ago. My ass is not watching season two, because I don't, I don't give a shit about who the fucking, and then the, he's gonna, is it the guy, is it the guy, is it the same guy, is it a different guy, is it a fucking, is, is it a default guy, like, I don't, I, you lost me, man. Now, to be fair, I'm not watching anything. Hi, Tomo. Siren, um, I don't know if Kate watched the, the rest of the last episode without me, which is completely fine. We had a long day with the baby yesterday. <laughs> um, anyway. I, yeah, I didn't? Okay. Well, then we're on the same page. I, I, I'm not going to spoil anything about the show. I do, I, that's what we were looking for. I do think, like, it's worth, um, watching. Sorry, I have to read this. This is so, because I had the exact same experience. As a kid, I didn't know Rick Dees was a national show. I thought he was a local guy on the radio. He was interviewing Nelly Furtado, and I wanted to go meet her. Turns out she wasn't in rural North Dakota. Oh, man. I also did not realize that uh, there was like national and international radio shows. And I was like, man, hey, look. this yeah, Rick these guys got like a really yes. professional, he's always advertising like American businesses, even though we live in like a, a mid-sized city in Ontario. I guided you this far Who's this lady again? I'm joking, I'm joking. Despite it all. I know her, she helps me level up, but like, what does she do? My spirit. I will bring it no, back. don't die, you're so sexy. <laughs> I'll grant you my power before my... I'm supposed to murder her, right? I will support you. All right, eat this Wemby. <laughs> so not enough air go. Sorry, honey. Daddy's stuck on the Dark Brotherhood right now. Sorry, Daddy's making vlogs in his truck about how fucking Harvey's has gone woke. They have gone woke, though. You were all on the same page, right? 
At Harvey's, you can have your hamburger your way. No, 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 no. In John Diefenbaker's Canada, you ain't having a hamburger your way. You get a third pound of ground chuck, one slice of marble cheese, and a little bit of French's mustard, and you called it a damn day. It is funny that it... Is this the same at American A&Ws? I'm about to out Canada if this is not um, the same way it is in America. Did you know at A&W, the hamburgers are named after members of your family? So when you go there, you'll say with a straight face, Hi, can I have a teen burger? <laughs> can I have a papa burger, a grandpa burger, a mama burger? A&W is pretty good. I'm just, just kind of weird. That's why my ass goes up and says something serious. Like, can I have a five-piece chubby chicken combo? <laughs> Let's be serious, man. It was crazy. You would think it would be, like, demonstrably different. But it's always like, oh, a papa burger has two patties. A mama burger, they fucking, like, grill the onions or something. So it's like a goofy ass restaurant, man. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, there is. I don't know if this is what it's actually called, okay? I don't think it's called a nut buster parfait at Dairy Queen. Isn't it called like a peanut butter buster parfait? Is it called a nut buster? It's called a peanut buster, <laughs> peanut buster parfait. <laughs> oh, man. Is Apollo over his ice cream arc? I didn't even know Apollo was in an ice cream arc. But you know what's interesting about skinny guys? I feel like every skinny guy I've ever met loves ice cream. My dad's pretty sinewy. He's ice cream all the time. It's so true. There's something about skinny guys. You know when you see a skinny guy, everyone's like, oh, you know the secret about skinny guys, right? They have like a huge appreciation for ice cream. Joe Biden? Uh, Joe Biden, pretty, uh, by presidential standards, pretty, pretty skinny president. Aren't you a skinny guy? Yeah, but I'm like resin skinny. Like I eat like a big guy and I work out. I do like more cardio than any other person on planet Earth that isn't like a professional athlete. I'm not trying to gas myself up. My diet is like not really good. I'm talking about naturally, like guys whose thermostat is set to skinny. Apollo's got a, a thermostat set to skinny. I have a thermostat that's set to like 20 pounds overweight. And I'm, I'm fighting against that by way of the Peloton. But I feel like guys who have a skinny thermostat love ice cream. That's my, that's my insane take. <laughs> but I think it's true. So many people were like, that is true. Skinny guys love ice cream, dude. I have a skinny thermostat. I hate ice cream. Do you smoke cigarettes? And now we're getting like way too specific. All skinny guys either love ice cream or smoke cigarettes. Tell me I'm wrong. I'm skinny and I used to, I knew it. I think skinny guys like ice cream almost as much as fat guys. I think skinny guys like ice cream more than fat guys. As long as we're coming up with null hypotheses that are impossible to test. No shot. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, okay, I think everyone loves ice cream. Fat guys like to eat pie more. And listen, I don't know how deep I want to go down the rabbit hole of what is a, what's a skinny guy food and what's a fat guy food. I said what I said. Well, I was, I, in fact, I would go a step further. It wasn't that I'm disagreeing with you. I'm actually agreeing with you. I just don't want to say it because I think it's a little problematic. But yes, I think pie is more of... And I'm not talking about like a, like a modern fat guy, so don't get mad. I'm talking about like Taft, okay? I'm talking about like foods that like fucking Calvin Coolidge would eat versus food that like Taft would eat, okay? Calvin Coolidge was slamming ice cream nonstop. Oh, I had never seen this before. Taft was eating apple pie. They're not the same, okay? 
What about jelly donuts? You're gonna get me on my high horse. Stop saying fat guy food. <laughs> I was gonna turn it into another opportunity to insult Tim Hortons. It's always crazy. When I see someone go inside of a, a Tim Hortons, open parentheses, I'm in there because it's piss day. I'm just there to use the bathroom. When I see someone order, like, 50 Timbits, I'm like, that makes sense. Probably like a kid's hockey practice or something like that that you're catering. It's a very economical way to handle that. When I see someone order a dozen donuts, I'm like, it's a work function or something. When I see someone walk up to the front of Tim Hortons and be like, give me one long john or something like that, I'm like, brother, what the fuck is wrong with you? You're making a special trip out to Tim Hortons to get one long john, like for yourself? This guy is insanely annoying. Hey, what the hell? I'm just out here doing- Oh, you mean the boss. You mean the boss. England motherfuckers be like, Ooh, you ever have the cockaliki soup from Weatherspoons? It's mint. Hang on. I'm dead. <laughs> You know what they should do, though? This... I, I don't know games. I know humor. Here's the way what they should do. This room should have Door Guardian. An absolutely massive man guarding an absolutely massive door. And then when that... When you finally beat this guy and that door opens up... You should be in another almost identical room. Except at the end of that room is an insanely tiny door and an insanely tiny door guardian. And then here's the, the echo to the joke, the second alarm. He should be three times harder than the big guy. Can you imagine the laughs when you opened up the door and there was a little version of the boss you just fought in there? And then Claptrap says, Handsome Jack must have a sense of humor. And then it wins Game of the Year from, like, every platform. And then, like, ten years later, they pretend that they didn't give it Game of the Year. And they're like, nobody ever liked it. And I'm like, your ass gave it a 9.8 out of 10, motherfucker. I can't believe... You know, sources are saying... Lies of P is so good that all future games in the genre are going to be called P-likes. <laughs> Hang on, I gotta think about that for a second. Me at the urologist. Soy Jack face. It's free piss day. Sorry. <laughs> I'm cracking myself up today. Come on. It, it starts with... It starts with one armor break. It starts with one ring. A really short guy, one fateful night, he decided to fly. Keep the ring safe, because you're about to be chased by some deadly ring wraiths. It's so unreal. <clears throat> What's your favorite Linkin Park song? I'd say the one they did for the Lord of the Rings soundtrack. Ed Sheeran's song from The Hobbit 2 goes hard, though. Really? Every day discovering something brand new. I'm in love with the one ring too. Come on, share your fish with me, Gollum. Come on, share your fish with me, Gollum. Breaking the Hobbit, that's pretty good. The Shire ain't a good place to find a lover, so Mordor is where I go. Me and the boys bring the ring and some toys. We gotta find smog and let it show. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Listen, it's not, he's, he's spitting, bro. It's hard. I'm embarrassed for you? Why? I mean, dude, honestly, I understand not everybody's like a huge Ed Sheeran fan, but it's like a shot in the arm when your uh, legs are tired and all of a sudden Bradley Rose says, now here's a little knee slapper for you. And then you, mm, baby, when you suck me like that and bring me closer, I get piss shivers. Baby, you want to stroke me till the sunlight clap. And if I see that he's over, then we'll bring it right back. Us at a, mm. You know what I'm talking about? That song that he wrote, Piss Shivers? Lions are on tonight. Let's go. 
you won't catch the Lions losing two in a row uh, this season. They're built different. They're a team like that. The fan duel uh, play of the game. Who's the who's the quarterback for the Lions? Fan duel pick of the game. Jared Goff. I'm taking the over on seven rushing touchdowns tonight. I think even though he's more of a stay in the pocket type pass first sort of quarterback, we're we're going the over on six rushing touchdowns. It's going to be a positively otherworldly performance. Great odds right now. It's uh, presently at FanDuel play anytime. It's trading at uh, minus 135,000. If you bet 100 bucks, you win 135,000 if it comes true. Whenever they're doing a sports broadcast where they talk about gambling, why don't they do it the way people who gamble do it? They always do like, hey, I think that Christian McCaffrey is going to get the over on one touchdown. No, you fucking coward. You got everybody addicted to this shit. What's your 12-way parlay? Come on. Show me how much of a degenerate you are. Who you got winning the tip-off in the Spurs versus Rockets game? Don't give me this shit. Well, he's been playing really well, so I'm going to bet on Steph Curry hitting the over on six threes tonight, you fucking pussy. Who's winning the tip-off? That first coin toss, is that, call, is that going heads or tails? We going heads or tails? I bet on Megatron coming in for one play at 800 to 1. What is that even? What the fuck does it mean? Megatron, the robot? <laughs> The Transformer? There's a guy named Megatron? <laughs> what is he? I mean, I know. Calvin Johnson? Megatron's name is Calvin Johnson? What in the Martha versus Superman is this? Where's a uh, fucking Starscream, bro? I got one to one odds on Starscream. Talking like this! My cousins are in deep on the 15-way parlays. It always cracks me up when they're watching golf. This shit is a scourge on society. It's fun, I bet. I've literally never done it. Not on the apps, anyway. Placed 40 bucks on Portugal to beat Spain in the 2008 World Cup when I was there. Not the shrewdest bet of my life, if you know how that World Cup went down. So, because I don't gamble... By the way, this will shock you. As long as you're looking about a, a very classic bit um canada being america but weird did you know that sports gambling was illegal in canada forever unless the only way they allowed you to do it was via a service called proline where you could only do parlays like they basically said people will get too addicted to gambling if we make it easy let's only give them like the black tar heroin of gambling you could you couldn't do single game betting, but you could be like, I think the Kings are going to beat the Jets and the Panthers are going to beat the Lightning. And then like there's going to be more than eight goals in the Sabres Devils game tonight. My parents have this great story. They have a friend, well, I, like a family friend, I think. I don't really know. It's their lives, not mine. They said like he had a system for winning. It's called ProLine. So he said what he does is he... So he, he does the parlay, and then here's where the secret is. The first part of the parlay doesn't matter, but you buy a second ticket, and then you choose exactly the opposite result on that one, and then you're guaranteed to win. <laughs> Guy who's betting on coin flips. I just bought one ticket that says heads, 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 and one that says tails, tails, tails. How could I go wrong? What is true, though, is that it does double your chances. That's true. At, at only double the cost. I just... I was kind of... I'm blue. I don't know what word to use. I think it's crazy that NHL suspended that guy for 41 games. For betting on the PGA. When in every single NHL broadcast, they're like, bet on games. Like, the dude didn't bet on his own sport. He bet on golf. Like that dude's cousin. <laughs> yeah, by a team. Well, I guess the league banned him. But he plays for a team that has a 
online casino as their sponsor on their helmet. It's just disingenuous, man. And then uh, apparently there's like a rule that you can bet, but you can't bet on team property. Like your ass can't like make a wager from the arena. What in the... Oh, I see now this is a little wrinkle I didn't know. Uh, betting on sports is uh, still illegal in New York State. And he was in New York when he placed the bets. I get it. So it's like a, it's, it's a weed thing. It's like you can smoke weed at the state level as long as you're not smoking it federally. Like when you go through the border crossing, you'll be like, no, no, no I've never smoked weed on a national level. It was simply at a, <laughs> at a state level. It was state level weed. Your honor, it was entirely swag. It was just seeds and stems. There wasn't a single sticky bit of icky in the whole bag. My head still hurts, Your Honor. Your Honor, I took one puff of the mid shit and greened out so hard I slept for 12 hours. No jury in the land could convict me. I took one hit off of a joint and it ruined my throat for weeks. Listen, librarian, maybe you should start with a chocolate chip cookie, okay? We'll work up from there. Fuck off. <laughs> I was like, it is surprising to have only eaten cookies from Subway. I know, I'm not trying to, you know, bring it back to that for, like, more time than it deserves. I'm just saying, like, it is still kind of remarkable. I know people counter by saying, yet you've never had lasagna. That's true. I'm willing to take the bullet. They can both be weird. It's weirder to have not had a cookie except at Subway. This guy looks ultra annoying. Yeah, well, listen. Paying attention would probably help. But I will say, he's definitely not my favorite boss so far. Please, I've got you on my 12-way parlay. Oh. You and Dan beating the door guardian at the same time. Malf shit-talking other city skylines to streamers because they didn't have the foresight to get an urban planning bachelor's. 13 years ago. I didn't realize I was being held to such high standards if I wanted to play a city builder. Apparently I need to go to a, a four-year college just to be able to play a Paradox Grand Strategy game without being judged. I have the over on the 13.5 piss count. <laughs> I mean, come on, we gotta be over that. Oh, stop! He's dead! Someone out there is like a 15-way parlay, and then the last leg is like NLSS on Wednesday. I'm here to tell you, <laughs> it's not happening, brother. It's not happening. You honestly take the early cash out on that. Is that how that works? Miyazaki, I don't want to be in the Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time in Jabu Jabu's belly. Oh, that would have been sick if it worked, though. We almost rainbow roaded it. Listen, I call it Ocarina of Time. And on the schoolyard, everyone was calling it Ocarina of Time. It was back in the day when nobody knew how to pronounce these words. I agree with you. Actually, well, I wonder how the Roman Empire would feel about that, considering they invented the fucking instrument in the year zero. I don't give a shit about Julius Caesar, okay? Didn't you go to a school for dumb people? Um, I grew up in the country, if that's what you're trying to say. A little offensive. Were many of the people I went to school with dumb? Yeah, obviously. Myself included. Stop pretending you think about the Roman Empire. I mean, I don't really think about the Roman Empire, but I have thought about it. He's got he's got to be weak on the backside.
Just look at it. <laughs> Bro, please. <laughs> My wife knows I watch this stream, dude. I'm not fighting that guy. You gotta be out of your mind. POV, you're the Rizzler. By the way, I don't know if anyone here still watches Super Auto Pets. Were people cracking up at uh, what if Gandalf was uh, Gen Z? And then his opening message on Tinder was Melon, open parentheses, with Riz? Well, you got me. There's a ladder there, huh? It's a fine bit. Let's go. Jerma said he hopes he didn't offend you by saying he fell asleep to your stream that one time. I feel like a kindred spirit with Jerma, even though we haven't really talked much. I feel like we're both normal people who spend our lives getting gaslit into thinking that we're like insane or terrible people. I fell asleep last night with Northern Lion telling me how good and bad things were, the different animals while I was sleeping with the iPad on my chest. I was just sitting there with iPad on chest, listening to him. My eyes are closed and I open it up, but I think the videos, it's like a two and a half hour video. I started the video. It was just like, fuck, I'm tired. This, I gotta, I gotta know though, I need to know. And I closed my eyes and I kind of woke up. It was, it was I think like an hour had gone by and now he was still going through the list. I was def definitely not offended. At all. In fact, I took it as a compliment that he was watching it to begin with. He's kind of wacky. The only I've, I've seen one wacky Germa thing. Everything else is always like, every clip is like, look, I, I think he's extremely funny, by the way. But every clip is like, look at this maniac. And then it's him going like, what, 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 what is that? What, what is that? What is, Chad, what is that? Like, that's, that's the clip. And then people are like, he's a serial killer. And I'm like, what is, what's going, and I've, the most insane thing I've seen from Germa is when he posted that sandwich that he was eating and there were like nine radishes on the, on the side of it. That's crazy. I think it was meant to be crazy. Like, I think he was, he was being self-aware. Probably. I've never seen his McDonald's order, no. Yes! Hey, what the hell, man? You pinned my arms behind my back when I was trying to climb the ladder? That's a dirty trick! <laughs> you hit me with the, that was a genuine back shot, man. He pinned my arms behind my back. No. Oh, <laughs> you bitch. Can I see the McDonald's order, please? That's what we're here for. He posted it. It's like six McChickens. I don't want a YouTube video. I don't go to YouTube. Can you put it in a fucking paste bin or something? It's like four McChickens. Big Mac, two McChickens, 10 piece nugget, two McChickens. <laughs> Two, two McChickens two times. That's that's comedy right there. That's I don't believe that he eats all that. That's too much food. That's like a Kobayashi order. Yeah. What's your McDonald's order? Uh, it's a, it's pretty normal. It's uh, it's a Big Mac, two McChickens, ten piece nugget, and two McChickens. Is that for your family or? <laughs> I usually order like seven sandwiches. You said four <laughs> McChickens right there. Total. Although no, you split it up. You it's two <laughs> two McDoubles, two McChickens. Uh huh. And if I'm feeling a little frosty, I'll right. get a Big Mac and then like a ten piece. <laughs> wow. But the ten piece is for the party, right? If you're eating with more than one person, the ten piece is to be shared with whoever else is there. Holy. Save some ass for the rest of us, cowboy. Or don't. The nuggets are for the table. He's joking on you guys. You don't have the media literacy to understand. 
three McDonald's burgers is a normal amount? No, it fucking isn't. I'm starting to understand why everyone like vilifies McDonald's so much. It's because you have no self-control. Your orders are getting fucking insane. People will be like, well, how does this guy stay fit when he eats at McDonald's? Because when I go there, I'm like, give me a fucking number nine or something like that. You're going there like I am ordering six sandwiches off the dollar menu and then like a, a 10 piece ch chicken McNugget as a side. You got to relax. You got to pace yourself a little bit, man. That's like a death row meal. You eat like a businesswoman in the 80s? I, I fucking gorge myself every damn day. I'm out here going crazy. I'm eating two ham sandwiches at like 11.30 p.m. That's not an 80s businesswoman. 80s businesswoman is like garden salad that is just like a, it's decroated ass iceberg lettuce, sliced cucumbers and julienne carrots and cocaine. People born in 2006 love to be like everyone was doing coke in the 80s. My ass was not there, so I can't validate this. I'm just saying. <laughs> I mean, I was born in 1988. My toddler ass was not doing any cocaine. Why does chat eat like a steel worker in the 1920s? They don't, though. It's the thing, because I've, I've been the fat guy who knows things about nutrition before. My ass will be like, you know, hey, you really shouldn't eat that. It's got lots of trans fat in it. And then at night, I'm like, full size bag of sun chips? Don't mind if I do. It's like, a, it's a rules for me, not for these sort of thing. What do you think is the most detestable reaction gif? Like when you see it, Prezo, I think you'd be an expert on this one. I don't know if you're still here. A girl on, it's not her fault, by the way. Girl on Big Brother drinking the, the, coffee and then spitting out like while she's drinking because she's laughing too hard that's one of them also michael scott uh and ellie kemper popping the champagne bottle on the office jonah hill waving his hands do you mean the jonah hill one where he goes like this or the jonah hill one where he goes like this when he's imitating the uh the mars volta the second one. Okay. <laughs> the Olivia Wilde, Mark Ruffalo, Michael Moore one. Yeah, but that one's like really funny. Two bosses in five hours is not that bad. As long as you recall that, or as long as you don't think about the fact that it was one boss for four hours and then one boss for like 45 minutes. Let me see if my wife is ready to stream. We'll play Backpack Battles tomorrow. She's not ready to stream. She's freaking live, bro. And that was true. That one boss was like four bosses. You're not wrong. Hey, thanks for watching. I'll see you tomorrow. See ya. Can I share some stories? I already shared a story on my subscriber only Discord. But here, maybe I can pull out the image. So what happened was there was like a little community event around our neighborhood this weekend. So we are dressed up as Monsters Inc. I'll show you. This is this is us because I thought which movie that I like that has basically a 3-year-old girl as a character and obviously it's monsters inc is my fave one of my fave movie so i dressed luna as boo and then i wanted to have ryan to dress as mike wazowski but then this thing is really hard to move around in like it's it's inflatable, right? It has like the fan thingy that's inside. You know, there was like the famous dinosaur costume. It's like that. It has the uh, fan thingy that blows in air. So you're constantly inflated. But then it's so hard to move. Because if you can see, Mike Wazowski, my dude got no knees. Or maybe he got knees, but he ain't got no butt. You know what I mean? It's literally two sticks in a big circle. So walking around in this costume was really hard. And also people will be asking, where can you see 
through from. It's the hard hat that has the M. You see how it's a little um, bright? That's, it's, it's like mash kind of, like you can see it through a little bit. But when there is a sunlight directly coming at you, you are con like it's actually flashbang. You cannot see a thing, and walking around in this costume was actually impossible. So like kids and adults, they loved my costume. They were like, "Whoa, it's Mike Wazowski!" Those are the adults. Kids, whoa, monsters. One eye monster, eyeball monster, eyeball monster, and then I was like, "Oh no, I didn't think my costume was that amazing. I don't know why they have to scream about it." Then proceeds with punching my costume. Like the there was a kid dressed up as Pennywise, and he did tornado kick on me, thinking that would be hilarious, and. And he tornado kicked from the front and the back and the side. And I was like looking at his mom like, bro, take care of your kid. Your, your own little Pennywise. He's a little mf -er. And then the mom legit didn't do anything. She was just watching like I was a doll or something. Like what the frick is going on? I was so pissed off that... Um, so Ryan, we were upstairs, we had to go down the stairs, and you know, like, I'm huge, like, this costume, like, I'm super big, it's, like, insane or inflated, so if I were to go down the stairs, it needs to be completely cleared off, or I won't be able to walk down, so Ryan said, okay, I'll walk down with Luna first, so you can walk down right after me, and I said, okay, and then as I was waiting for them to walk down, one kid goes like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I love your costume. And I said, oh, thank you. And then the parents, they were politely asking, like, is it okay um, if he gives you a high five? I'm like, yeah, sure. And then I tried to do a high five, and then the kid was a little scared. I'm like, it's okay, give me, give me a high five. And then the kid's like, oh, 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 oh. And I'm like, bro, I gotta go. But then I was like, okay. And then I don't know where he gives me a hug, which was sweet, I guess. And I said, oh, thanks. Like, that's sweet. And then, somehow, that started chain of six or eight kids running towards me and touching my costume. But not, like, nicely touching. Like, punching. Kicking. I have no idea why this kid, who wanted to first give me a high five, turned into a hug. Which was nice. And then started, like... Raids of kids kicking and punching me, and I said, "Ah, I have to go down. Help me, please stop! No more, no more!" And then the kid said, "Oh my God, there's a person in it! What? It's a monster! It's a monster! Attack! Attack!" And then the kids were like attacking me. Oh, what's going on? And I was like, "Ryan, Ryan, help me, Ryan!" And then Ryan was just like at the bottom of the stairs looking up, like smiling. I'm like, what the fuck? Why are you abandoning me? And I said, we have to leave right now. We have to go. I'm, I'm done. I just like, it was so stupid. I just don't understand why like a kid gave me a hug and then they said, ah, I'm gonna punch them and I said stop 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 punching me and then they said there's a person inside attack But well, honestly, you know how people they think Oh, if you have a kid you're per you love kids. You know how to be around other kids like Now you're a pro at kids bro other than my own kid. I hate all kids and 90% of babies and you'd be like, oh, how can you hate babies? Babies are so cute well, yeah, it kind of got better because I 100% hated all the babies. No baby on earth was cute. At least after having Luna, now it has gone down to 90%. I hate 90% of babies. They still look like devil. 10% of them are cute. And I go, aw, that baby is cute. But only 10%. You know, it starts with, it starts with one armor break.
It starts with one mate, a really short guy, one fateful night. He decided to fly, keep the ring safe, because we're about to be chased by some deadly ring rates. It's so unreal. Ed Sheeran's song from The Hobbit 2 goes hard, though. Really? Shire ain't a good place to find a lover, so Mordor is where I go. Me and the boys bring the ring and some toys. We gotta find small and let it show. <laughs> Listen, it's not he's he's spitting, bro. It's hard. Every day discovering something brand new. I'm in love with the one ring too. Come on, share your fish with me, Gollum. Come on, share your fish with me, Gollum. Breaking the Hobbit, that's pretty good. 